I'm off to Copenhagen this evening so I thought it would be fun to film getting ready and a little bit of the trip um, because I had such a good time last time I thought I would film it this time and share it with you guys. So I'm just going to put the tiniest bit of makeup on. Um, my flight isn't until like 7.45 in the evening so I've got a day to get myself together. It feels very strange to have an evening flight. I usually the last few flights I've been on have all been horrendously early in the morning so it's very nice to be honest. I'm just putting a tiny bit of concealer under my eyes on top of my eyes. My skin has been so dry recently so any concealer that goes on it just sort of looks awful because it creates that sort of dry circle around it. It's best if I just put very minimal foundation and concealer on and if I do put any on at all it has to be a sort of moisturising one which I find this one is and I don't know why I'm rubbing it in with my fingers because I literally never do this <laughs> I usually use a brush but I think because my skin is so dry I'm just trying not to disrupt it too much I'm going to put a tiny bit of contour wand on I've been wearing my hair in like a half up sort of style recently and I've been really enjoying it because I personally can't really stand my hair down for much longer than half a day <laughs> unless it's curled in a way that it just sits away from my face but usually if my hair is straight it just falls all over my face but I quite like this sort of half up situation but I think I'll be wearing a hat most of the time this week outside because it would be quite cold. And hats are great because they just hold everything in place in your hair and you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to put a lot of blush on because I feel like I need blush to make myself look alive. This one is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Wand in Pink Gasm. So I just put that quite high up on my cheekbones and blend that in. And then recently I've been putting this blush on on top of that. It's one of the Hollywood blushes from Charlotte Tilbury. I don't know why it always comes across so blotchy on camera but in real life it looks fine. <laughs> I'm going to fill my brows in a little bit with Benefit Browsings in shade 3 and then I'm just setting those into place with 24 hour brow set. This has gone back to being my favourite again. I was really enjoying the Refi brow sculpt, but I find by the end of the day it kind of goes a bit sort of crusty looking, whereas this one doesn't do that, it just stays clear. I'm going to add some faux freckles because well, why not? <laughs> a little bit of lip liner, always Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk. Mine's getting a little small. I have a few that are on the go <laughs> that are this size now. And then I just finish off with a little bit of the Glossier Balm.com. And that is my makeup done for the day. I'm going to try and find my travel size of my Aven Thermal Water because it's so nice to use on the plane. But anyway, I'm going to pack the rest of my makeup up. I emptied it all out on the floor just now to see if I actually need to take it all. And then I'm going to finish my last bits of packing. How typical is that? I'm about to go away for three days and my amaryllis is just blooming. <laughs> Hopefully it will still be in bloom when I come home. I'll probably move it into another room while I'm away so people can get the most of the blooms that come from it. But anyway, I need to cut out some hexagons. So if you saw my last video, you'll have seen the hexagon quilt I've been working on looks like this so far and I am going to cut some more hexagons out so that I can sit and sew little flowers on the plane 
I doubt I'm going to have much time to be honest because it's going to be such a whistle stop visit but you never know so I'm going to pop this away I'm definitely not taking this with me because you imagine if I lost it so I have this little paper template that I use when cutting out my hexagons and I've actually just realized that I have a load in here already so I'm going to count the ones I've already got and then see how many I need to make still. To be fair, I probably don't even need to cut any more out because this is quite the stash to be getting on with. <laughs> but it is always nice when you realise that you have actually done quite a lot of the work already and you have less than you think you need to do. <laughs> Need to cut more of these two fabrics and then I should have enough to finish what I wanted to finish with the quilt. <laughs> so all I've been doing is just taking a pencil, I like to use a fine point retractable pencil and then I take the paper pattern piece and just trace around. So I'm going to go and give these an iron before I start cutting them out. So now that they're ironed and flat, I just take my card paper piece. I have this fancy little machine that cuts out my paper, or my slightly thicker than paper hexagons, and I use those in the middle and sew around them. And I sew around the edge to hold it onto the paper after sticking it on with a little bit of glue um, and then I just so yeah that gives me that shape and then this is one centimeter larger all the way around and I just place that on top and draw around it in pencil and I don't leave any gaps between the cuts because we're trying to waste as little fabric as possible and that's pretty much it. I just keep going until I've got the amount of hexagons I need and then I just cut them out with my fabric scissors. Then once I've got my hexagons, I then take my paper hexagons that I cut out the other day and I just open up my Pritt stick. Pritt stick seems to work just fine for sewing. Don't buy into the fabric. You have to have these fabric glue pens because Pritt stick is water soluble. It will just wash out. Um, so you just put a tiny bit on the back and just stick it in the centre. And then once I've done that, I go in and sew all the way around, folding the corners down and stitching in the corners. But for now, I'm just sticking down the paper so that I've got them ready to sew when I go away. Just make sure you're not putting too much glue on the paper because you need to take the paper out at the end and the more glue you put on, the harder it's gonna be to take it out. I would do a little voiceover for my trip to Copenhagen. So we went to a lot of cafes in Copenhagen. 
I saw these very cute poodles on the way to one. This one was called Atelier September and I had these amazing almond pancakes that was a bit like a cake with loads of berries and cream on top. It was really good. After we'd fueled up, we went fabric shopping at Self Made. The girls were very patient while I looked around the fabrics. And the rest of the time, we just walked around, did some touristy bits, went into lots of lovely shops. This is the Hay House. It's so gorgeous. Definitely worth a little visit. And I loved the staircase of the Hay House. It had these really pretty iron flowers and I was I don't know and for some reason I was just obsessed with them then the next day we went to another cafe and I had the most amazing croissant I've ever had in my life it had poppy seeds on the top and like an almond croissant filling this time we went to the design museum and I was really surprised at how much textiles they had on show and I particularly liked these little linen test fabric samples so it's basically all the little techniques people testing out techniques on the fabric half of it was closed though so that was quite annoying we didn't get to see like the famous chair room or anything there was a very cute little red squirrel we're so not used to seeing red squirrels in the uk <laughs> and clearly i have a thing for ginger animals so copenhagen also made me feel extremely broody with the amount of cute kids around like the cute clothes that they wear oh my gosh so sweet I picked out this striped jumper from the brand Boy and it's definitely worth a visit if you're going to Copenhagen. It was a really cool shop. And that was it. That's my whistle stop trip to Copenhagen. <laughs> I'm back from my little trip to Copenhagen and I thought I would share the fabric I picked up. It was very much a whistle stop trip to Copenhagen. So I didn't film much and I just spent the time catching up with my friends and having a nice time and it was really good. So I'm sat on the floor because I've put all my fabric away because I actually got back a few weeks ago and I just haven't filmed anything since. I ended up just buying fabric from Self Made in the end. So that's where these are all from in Copenhagen. first one I actually have out already because I was going to make my new will address in this fabric. Um, but I think I'm going to wait and film me making it with this fabric. <laughs> I love a fabric that's got some texture to it, so Sea Sucker is great. And I think this is going to look really nice as a dress, a very wearable fabric. This is where I store most of my fabric, in these little plastic boxes. I have rather a lot of fabric. <laughs> so, let's see. I picked up this really beautiful cotton gingham which is in this really dark brown and it's got such a nice lightweight feel to it. This is going to be really comfy as a summer dress so love that. Then in their sales section I found this cotton linen blend which is in this gorgeous large blue and beige and cream check. Again it's got a really lovely texture to it and the fact that it's not 100% linen will mean that it's gonna not crease too much and I actually got a smocking machine recently which I'm so excited about um, I'm definitely gonna do a video on smocking and I might even show you my little smocking um, experiments that I've been doing in this video um, and I thought this would actually look really good smocked because the checks would then go from being really bunched up and tight with the smocking to then wide and I think that would look quite cool. Then I picked up a selection of jersey fabrics because I recently braved sewing jersey and it was actually fine. <laughs> I don't know why I put it off for so many years because it was a lot easier than I thought. So I've got three different jersey fabrics. The first one is this brown stripe, which I think I'll do that way around. I like a horizontal stripe, not a vertical stripe. And I just live in jersey tops, so I thought it only makes sense to try and learn how to make something that I wear all the time. And then this next one, oh, is just stunning. I kind of wish I got more of this now. But look how beautiful. It's that sort of, I don't know, is it pointella or poignette? But yeah, 100% cotton, can't go wrong. And then finally I picked out quite a few metres of this polka dot one which I had already purchased and it's organic cotton and it is just so soft 
and my plan is to make myself some pajamas with these and to have like a few different sets of pajamas within the same print because I made some pajamas that I actually really love wearing a few years ago just in cotton but I thought if I learn how to make some stretchy comfy pajamas then they will look very cute and then the last thing I picked up is just some organic cotton ribbing so this will be good around necklines and cuffs of um, leggings if I want to make some leggings so yeah I just love that the fabric shops out there actually have quite a selection of organic cotton fabrics they're definitely not as readily available in the UK um, at a good price that is um, so very very happy to see a lot of organic cotton like I mentioned just now I picked up a smocking machine recently I have wanted one of these for so long I say a smocking machine, it's a smocking pleater. So I'm pretty sure they don't make them anymore, which makes them quite hard to get hold of. And they're kind of quite an old bit of kit. <laughs> so I was always on the lookout for them on Facebook Marketplace and eBay. I didn't really try Etsy because Etsy just seems to always be really expensive. So this one was about 90 pounds, which is actually very good for a smocking pleater because they usually go for like 150 or 200 or they're always sat up on eBay for that amount. Whether they actually get sold for that, I don't know. I've been playing around with it and I am just obsessed. And I'm actually really surprised at how quick it is to smock. I don't know why, I thought it would take me absolutely ages because I really hate hand sewing. But this is just lovely. And like it's really nice to just sit and smock and there's I think because there's an actual technique to it maybe that's why I like it a bit more because there are rules to follow with the type of stitch and it looks so satisfying when it's done as well so I've been spending the last few weeks on and off just playing around with it and doing some little samples and mock-ups and at some point I want to figure out how to make myself a blouse or to make my sister's little girl something because that would be so cute. I shall show you some of my samples. I've been just watching so many YouTube videos of how to smock. These are a little bit creased because they've been in my drawstring bag but here's one little sample. How satisfying is that? And it's slightly stretchy too but I'm sort of figuring out how how to work with it and how to make a pattern based on how much gathering there's going to be and everything because look how cute that would be as a cuff I think for a cuff it would be fine to leave it there but most smocking needs to have like a bias trim to secure the gathers otherwise it just sort of stretches out a bit too much I think it's hard to say but I don't want to like make a garment and not put the bias trim at the top and then it all unravel or not unravel but just sort of stretch out as soon as I wash it or something so hence why I'm doing all of these little swatches and samples this is another little sample this one I did on a curve to see how it would look as sort of like a neck neckline smocking or as like a little collar I did a tiny little one this was one of my first trials I can't remember which way this is meant to go but yeah it's definitely good with the real contrasty um, embroidery I think I think that looks good because if you're going to do all the work you may as well see it <laughs> so that's been fun playing around with the smocking I'm definitely way behind with my hand quilted um, quilt now. <laughs> anyway, I currently have a selection of people testing my dress pattern out, which is very scary but also very exciting because it means it's closer to being released. Um, and next week I'm going to start filming the how to make video um, of the Willa dress and I can't wait so excited for you all to be able to see this dress pattern and hopefully make one yourself but I was also looking at my bag patterns the other day and I decided that I want to make 
another pattern to release that's like a very beginner friendly pattern that's just more of like a shopper tote style so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do like a normal tote bag and a sm slightly smaller one that's just like a handheld one so that's what I've been working on recently and I'm gonna do some more today and I'd love to get some little mock-ups made so I can start testing them out because I like to test out the bags before I put the pattern into the universe. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. I will insert some little videos of me doing some smocking testing if you want because I think I took some video of me doing it the other day. But I'm planning on filming a smocking video at some point um, with the garment I decide to make. And it's very exciting. Um, but for now, let's go do some pattern cutting. I was trying to figure out the best way to make a slightly chunkier strap last night. Um, and by chunkier I mean like podgy. <laughs> because I'd quite like this tote bag to have a proper quilted strap um, rather than just a, a folded strap. Well, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Yeah, I know. It's so funny ducks, isn't it? We have ducks and their little run is just out there. And <laughs> they're being very noisy today. So I made some extremely, extremely rough bags last night just to get the shape. This is how I pattern cut. Usually I make, I do the pattern and then do a really rough test just to see the shape and the size. Um, so this is the size I've come up with for the smaller one. I kind of want it to look like, you know when you go to a cute little shop and they give you like a little paper bag? I kind of want it to be like that sort of size and shape. So I think that's good for now. So I did do this one and I, d I just think that's a bit like skinny. And then I did this one which is the bigger tote style and obviously it will look different when it's quilted and in nice fabric and lined and everything but for now that's just what it looks like. So when I make the changes I write them down and then I go back to my master pattern which I keep on a just one piece of paper and I don't cut this master pattern up um, so I can keep tracing back from it. So I need to work out the strap length now so that's what I'm going to do. the next day now and I've cut out all of my pieces to make a final mock-up of these bags so that I can test them out over the next few days and I have just sewn a big length of trim to gather up so I'm going to sit here and gather it I just do two parallel rows of really long stitch length and then I just slowly gather it. I haven't done this in a while and I forgot how much I actually really disliked doing this. <laughs> so that's the plan for today. I need to show you Florence because she is looking so cute. I just can't deal. Oh you're so cute. Did you know that? Hi darling. to decide the placement for my label before I stitch this bag together. What do we think? Top or bottom? Or none at all? I did just make the straps and these are 
different to how I usually make the straps and I really like how they've turned out actually because I kind of wanted the straps to look like they were a bit podgy too like the rest of the the fluffy quilting so hopefully that will look all right they don't curve very nicely at the top so maybe I should mm, I could stitch them like halfway along just to hold the top what do we think? Do we prefer the strap like that or just flat? I think it kind of makes it look more like an actual strap, doesn't it? So I think I'll do that. my two little tote bags so I've got my normal just everyday size tote bag classic size tote bag and then this little mini one so I mean you can add the ruffle to either um, and labels wherever this one is so cute I'm not sure if it should actually be a bit smaller but it's probably fine you want it to have some room in it even if it's a mini tote I'm gonna try them out for a few days see what changes I want to make see what works well. I'm not sure if these chunky straps are really going to work that well because they sit okay on my shoulder at the moment but when I had like a big chunky, when I had that gilet on it didn't really sit on it very well and I'm worried it's going to like do that and that is so annoying when you have that with a bag. Um, and I have pretty broad shoulders so <laughs> if you don't then it would definitely fall off. So I might make the strap a bit thinner or I will just take the wadding element out of the strap and try it like that. So, there's lots of things I can try. There we go, I'm gonna end the video here. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm excited to film my smocking video soon and also my dress pattern video is being filmed next week. So I'm excited to do that. I will see you guys in my next video.